All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 329 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am Via Faller, and today we're going to talk some Georgia Southern football to end out the week. Uh, I want to thank you guys for all the support, all the everyone who comes through and gives uh, feedback, people who just come through and like and, 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 you know, share this content. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you guys. I cannot thank you guys enough. This is your first time here. Welcome. This is the first and frame rate show. I am VF Baller. We talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. Uh, also, if you're listening to this uh, or watching this on the YouTube side of things or Rumble, I can be found on YouTube and Rumble. Just search for some frame rates. Or if you're listening to this on the audio side and you want to find out other avenues to listen to this, I am on uh, Stitcher, Anchor, Spotify, Apple and Google um, podcast so you can uh, find your way uh, if you decide to subscribe of any of those avenues I actually uh, um, I recommend you guys to subscribe to more than one because you never know one of these platforms may go down at any given moment technical difficulties or whatever the case may be and with that being said you can also listen if something like that was to happen uh, also if you want to donate hit any of the links down in the description that helps, you know, grow the podcast and help everything continue to move in the right direction. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. Don't want to hold you guys up anymore. Georgia Southern football, we're going to go all in and we're going to end the week on Georgia Southern talk uh, after talking about the, the path to the Super Bowl for the Falcons yesterday, um, how long or where we can go to get to that point. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty long road, but nevertheless, we we'll talk about some Georgia Southern football today, and is, are there high expectations for Georgia Southern football now? Coach Clay Helton came in and 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 basically changed the direction of this team based on where it was the year before, with the recruits, the the style of play, the pretty much the the whole attitude of the team has pretty much changed for the most part. Now we still are in favor of having G, GS men, guys who are going to be here and do the right thing and be upstanding um, guys. But you can clearly see the type of athletes that we're getting. We are recruiting bigger, stronger, faster players. Players that are willing to get in the weight room and put in that work. Guys that are multi-talented in different positions. Some guys who are just sound in one good in one position that are very, that's really good in that position. And with the coaching staff that Coach Clay Helton's brought in, uh, I put myself not only with the staff that he brought in, but the players that he's recruiting and the mindset that he's bringing. I put high expectations on this team for next year. I don't know what the team's going to look like. I don't know what the first snap's going to look like. I haven't been to a scrimmage. I I do want to get to the spring game, but I haven't seen anything. So I don't know what Georgia Southern football is going to look like, but I already already pinned these guys with eight wins or less. I've been sticking with that since December, and I'm still going to stick with that. But I want to ask, is that high expectations? Is that a little bit too high? Is that too lofty? For Georgia Southern, because I I think with what we're bringing to the table, the quarterbacks we're going we're going to break down um, my thoughts on all of these positions once again because I do this pretty much on every episode, but I just try to change it up a little bit. Quarterbacks, running backs, tight ends, receivers, O line, D line, secondary, linebackers. I mean, I can just go on and on with whatever the case may be, and I'm looking at it like. This team could go very far if if everything I, – I, no team is perfect, so I'm not going to say everything needs to fall into place. But if we do everything that we set out to do and we catch a couple of breaks like every team pretty much does, and there, there's no denying that pretty much every team that, that plays and be successful catch a break here or there throughout the season. So if we can just play our style of ball, and if it's implemented properly, where well, a lot of these kids who are maybe used to that style of football but just came to Georgia Southern and they changed things up with the option, if they're able to go back and run that style of ball again and they're good at it, I don't see why we won't be able to be as good. I just don't. I, I, I just don't understand how. Why not? I mean, you look at guys starting with the quarterback, Kyle Van Treese. Um, to be honest with him, be honest with you, between him and Cam Ransom, I don't know who's going to be the starter, but that that's my choice, one or two. I don't think you can go wrong with either one, honestly. Uh, if it was my guess to be a little bit smart about it, 
I would think that Van Trees will probably start and Cam Ransom will be right behind him next year. But you still got guys like Zach Roseman and all these other guys that, that you know, were recruited that look like they can play. I think Davis Dallas is still injured and he's going to be out for some time. I don't know how long his injury is going to be. I'm not sure. That's the last time I heard of him on the, um, when they had a press conference. But you, you're going to have to understand, like, the quarterback situation looked like it's very secure. That That's not an issue anymore. I mean, it was secure when Shaw Wirtz was around. Don't get me wrong. But you know that we, we don't, we're running a different offense. And I can't, I'm not going to sit here and say Shaw Wirtz couldn't run that offense. I think he could. Shaw Wirtz could have done a lot of things if, you know, if things was implemented differently. Because there's nothing to take away from him. I, I, the one thing I will say, and I don't want to, I don't want to labor this too long. I think Shaw Wirtz was not given the proper tools to be a quarterback. Like he could have, because I because I, I know he had an arm, it just never was developed the way that it should have, and it kind of sucks. But we're past that now, and um, unfortunately, you know, I, I you know I really would have liked to see him, you know, use that arm more. But we're going to get into this Calvin Trees Cam Ransom situation. Look like these two guys. It looks like it was one A and one B. Like I said, we talked about some other guys that are here. Uh. Uh, Richie Lankford is here as well. He transferred, and and it's like I don't I don't know who the quarterback is going to be, but th- those are my two one A one B, and the rest of the guys are just going to be fighting for de- de- you know further down on the depth chart. They're going to have to pay their dues. You know, you don't get too many freshmen to come in and just play right away. Zach Roseman looked like he he looked like he's a prototypical quarterback that can, but I know there's some polish that probably can be that can be worked on based on. Clay Helton's office. It's not a knock on any of those guys. It's just that I know that's how it is. You know, I mean, you don't find too many true freshmen come in and just ball. I think even Connor Sagelski, he had a good game against BYU, but with him, it was more like um, he had a lot to learn when it went further down the road. You know, you started to see what he can do when he played against Appalachia State and, and all the other things. But at the same time, when you look at that, uh, you just don't have the experience. So when you look at that, it's like, all right, he had one good game. And this one, not so good. It's going to be kind of up and down. So it's not necessarily fair to judge in a, in a situation like that. So with that being said, I think that if you sit behind, you know, a couple of veterans a year or so, you'll get the learning. And once you're a sophomore, all bets are off. I mean, I think, to be honest with you, I think, if you have the talent, by the time you're a sophomore, you you should be ready to to, to roll and and start in, in in at the quarterback position. So um, far and few between, you get some freshmen that are out the gate balling, you know, because there's a lot to learn. It's a big transition from high school to to college, and that just goes when I talk about the uh the running backs. Running backs is a little bit more difficult because more on instinct. And um, that's going to be really interesting how that plays out. I have no idea who's going to be running the rock for George Southern. It could be by committee because we got like four running backs that can play very well. Now I don't. I'm not even going to get here and just start saying who's what because I don't know. The quarterback, excuse me, the quarterback position is a little bit more easier to to figure out because it's one guy on the field. But with the running backs, I mean, I don't think anybody's going to be a bell horse or a bell cow. A workhorse. I said that all over the place, right? I don't think anybody's going to be that one guy that's going to run the rock 20, 30 times. I'd be highly surprised if that's the case. Um, Because you just got too many good, you got too many good guys out there. I don't know too many people left that are wide receivers. Um, I could have pulled up the roster and, and really look. But I'm just going to give you some guys that necessarily stands out. You know, Durham Burgess was a guy that stood out. J.J. McAfee, so-so. You know, we got a couple of transfers that are coming in. Um, the Jet is coming in. That's going to be a wide receiver for us. Yeah, I mean, he's a true freshman. I don't think he's on campus yet, but he looks like a guy that, that can run really fast. I love to put the ball in his hands, you know. So it, it, it is a lot that's going into the receivers. But like I said, that just goes back on the, on the quarterbacks. I mean, what kind of plays we're calling? Who's going to be throwing the ball to them, you know? Offensive line just looks nasty right now. I'm looking at these guys, uh, watching these guys push guys around, 
And it looks like that's, you know, offensive line coach is trying to preach that toughness. And once again, getting these guys ready to push and knock people over to get the ball carrier running the ball, get some protection for the quarterbacks to throw the ball properly. So a lot of these guys that were here last year are learning something totally different. The defensive line, you know, the loss of C.J. Wright, Christian Varner comes in and play. You got Justin Ellis is coming back. You know, you got guys like that. Uh, and even with the loss of some linebackers, we got some guys coming back. And Bradley Glenn is coming back to play linebacker. You know, Kavon Glenn is going to be with us. You know, I, I like I like some of the things that Kavon Glenn was able to do when he did play. You know, Trent, Was- Trent Watson is coming back to play as well. Quinn Williams, I think Quinn Williams is coming back. You know, so we we got. I mean, the the linebackers is just so, you know. You know, it, it's just so. Uh, it's so crazy how much we got going on. Is that Quinn Williams? I want to look that up. I want to make that make sure I'm right. Yeah, you got Quinn Williams coming back. Started ten games last year. Stepped the great pick six in that uh, Arkansas State game. You know what I mean? We we got a lot of players in it, and, and when we talk about the secondary, I mean we had, we lost like three players in the secondary. You know, Tyler Bride. Um, you had uh, oh goodness, Derek Canteen. You know, man, it, you just had so many play. I mean, so many players that was just you know was that was hurt that didn't really, you know, was was not able to really play like they should. And now we get and we get a lot of players back now. Najee Thompson is another one. It's coming back. You know what I mean? We got so many players that are just going to be able to uh contribute. Mazel Williams, he's a sophomore. We'd love to see him play a little bit. Played 11 games last year. 111 total snaps. So am I? The, the, do I have high expectations for this team? Because I think I think a lot of guys here, a lot of guys here are, are are winners. We've seen these guys. I mean, even prior to the three and nine season, a lot of these guys was still was here, and um, they they know what it's like to to win. So it, it's, it's no secret to have these guys coming back to play um, under a new coach. Knowing what it's like to to smell victory a week in and week out, and be with a coach and a coaching staff that's capable of um, putting some wins on the board. So when we when we're looking at the 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 total, you know, the total aspect of this team, is it is it far fetched to say that I have a high expectation? Or anybody have high expectations? I think this team could win eight wins, and I know it's going to be tough. I know it's going to be tough. You know, when you looking at player, when you go, when you going up against teams like a, a a a UAB, a Coastal Carolina, James Madison, Georgia State, even Louisiana, App State, Old Dominion is coming to Paulson. Marshall, no Old Dominion. We have to go to Old Dominion. Marshall was coming to Paulson. So when you when you're looking at that, I mean, we we have a very we have a very uh, good looking schedule, favorable schedule. You know, I think, like I said, the only teams that I'm looking at that we may have to worry about is going at Louisiana, uh, at Coastal Carolina, at Nebraska, at UAB. I think we could take Appalachian State at home. I think we could take Marshall. That's going to be a tough one, but I think we take Marshall as well. James Madison is no slouch. So I think we could take them too. So I'm looking at an eight and four season with the bowl win, and we're looking at nine wins. I I I don't I don't see how that is a but I I, I think eight games minimum, and I don't think that, maybe that are high expectations. Maybe I'm asking for too much in the first season. I know there are some people that have um, messaged me and said like, look, they want something to happen now. They want something to happen year one. They want they want to see results, you know. So with that being said, they they really want that to happen, and we need to. We, I would like to see that as well because after a three and nine season, you know, I really want to see these guys, uh, you know, turn this thing around. 
But we have everything in place to do so. I don't see where it is, you know, not, I don't see where it's not viable that it won't happen, you know? I mean, am I crazy? Do I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, let's think about the reason why it won't happen. I think the only reason why it won't happen is because it's the first year, not because of lack of talent, not because of the game plan. And like I said, I know I'm talking, you know, really premature. I know this is premature, but I'm just looking at what I see. And I'm like, with this staff, how could you not win? Even if I lower the expectations, said six wins, how could you not win with this team? The recruits that we bought in, not even just recruits, the transfers that we came in in, in very prominent places, the CJ Wright replacement, the upgraded wide receiver, I mean, yeah, the upgrades at wide receiver. You know, the upgraded quarterback. It's so much that we've seen that was changed. So it's like, how could you not see it? I, I mean, maybe I'm sure I, I, I see it. I don't think the expectations are too, you know, I don't think they're too high. I just don't. May, hey, you know, I, what what do you guys think? I, I don't know what else to say about that. I just want to let you guys know how I feel at the end of the week about our teams. Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. I wanted to end it on a note talking about Georgia Southern. I just been sitting there trying to think like what else I, I could be wrong about. I mean, yeah, you can have somebody in here just to say, hey, Clay Helton can't do and, You know, you can have some of the USC defectors or UF, UF, USC clowns. I think I said USC the first time. Well, anyway, you know what I mean. Southern Cal, these guys come in and want to talk bad about our coach for no reason, but you know how that goes. But what I'm saying is, like, realistically, like, with the team that we're putting together, how could you, we not? put up you know six seven eight wins i'm shooting for eight i think we can get eight easily oh i know that's gonna, gonna hit people I, I you know football ain't easy but i'm just saying it from a fan standpoint i think but i just think that eight wins is the minimum let me know what you guys think if you like this content hit the like button share this video share this podcast subscribe to any of these av- podcast avenues if you like uh, it really would appreciate it. it mean the world to me if you could. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, if you want to uh, share this, let people know what I'm doing over here. Also, uh, if you want to donate, you know, you can uh, hit the links down at the bottom of this. Uh, what you call it? The description. The way all the information is there. Uh, like I said, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the support. You guys are amazing. You guys continue to help this go in the direction that's going. We are growing. We are growing. We are getting close to 10, uh, you know, 1050 on the sub count. You know, Rumble is moving pretty well. And I look at all the analytics and, and, and a little bit of inside baseball before I go, before I get out of here. Uh, Last week, this is phenomenal. Last week, we had over 420 listeners on this podcast. Now, that may not seem a lot a lot to most people, but that is a really big deal. Throughout the week, we had 420 plus listeners, unique listeners last week. Now, I can't wait to see what it looks like this week, but that's just and I'm not even talking about the YouTube and Rumble numbers. I'm just talking about just straight anchor and uh, Spotify numbers. Now, I don't know what it looks like for Apple. I don't know what it looks like for Google. I don't know what it looks like for Stitcher or whatever the case may be, but I'm just telling you like. We are growing, and it's thanks to you guys. It's thanks to all of you, you guys. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. But I just wanted to throw that in there. Let people know what we're doing over here at Eagle Nation, man. Just let let everybody know. Let people know what we're doing in Falcons Nation. You know, we're, 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 we're making some progress, and give me your feedback. Give me a five-star rating or whatever the case may be. If I'm not doing good, give me some feedback. All right, enough of that rant. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. I just wanted to let you guys know that. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy the rest of your yeah. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will see you guys on Monday, unless if you're on the Patreon, I have a have a video up on Sunday for you guys on Patreon. All right, y'all. Y'all be blessed. Peace.